even if let's say the world turns upside down and every piece of evidence we have now gets overturned by another 20 studies. Worst case scenario, you made the same gains and you made an educated bet based on the current evidence, which makes sense, especially in the context of, I want to get the most gains possible? Bro, it's an extra half a second of doing this. Yes. Like, just do it. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for RP Strength, and I am here with one of my esteemed colleagues, Dr. Pack, who only has the name Dr. Pack and no other name in the world. But his actual name is Greek and thus not pronounceable to the rest of civilization. Do you want to say your whole name for fun? For sure. It's Patroclos Andrulakis Korakakis, which is pronounceable, but very intimidating. Very intimidating. It's a very long Greek name. Dare I say Kyriakos Grizzly-esque in some small sense. He has a unique uh, surname though, Kapakulak. Because mm -hmm. it has some, uh, it, its origins are from the, when Greece was, the, the Turkey, Greece part, oh. like, like, was some of that origin, it's not a common name. So I think his is, is, is a bit less Greek-esque. So you're the, more Greek. The more you know. Than the, more, the most Greek man of all time. It's difficult to be more Greek than Kyriakos. Very recently. difficult. What is also difficult, apparently, is doing something with optimal technique. And uh, Dr. Pack is has just co-authored a study on what is the optimal technique. And we want to talk about it because it sounds right up our alley, folks. Pack, tell us a story. What's going on? For sure. So we recently published a narrative review. And for those that don't know, a narrative review is essentially a peer-reviewed blog post in the sense that it's our take on the current literature. And we reviewed the literature on optimal technique for maximizing hypertrophy gains. Now, the reason we opted for this type of review is because in order to do a systematic review, which is usually considered you know, one of the best uh, types of evidence in the scientific world, is because in order to do a scientific review, you need to have studies exploring the topic, directly exploring the topic that you want to review. But in the case of exercise technique, there isn't much out there. Mm -hmm. There there was literally no definition of what technique means in general. And we essentially wanted to lay the base for future research and also see, okay, based on the current scientific evidence, what would be what would be a rough direction, some guidance for optimal technique when wanting to absolutely maximize gains. Gains being hypertrophy. Hypertrophy specifically. And what did you guys find, roughly speaking? So we identified a few different components of technique. Range of motion, tempo, exercise specific kinematics, and that was it, more Let's or less. Let's go through each one. Range of motion, what did you find? For sure. So based on the current literature, although we cannot confidently say at this stage that you should perform partials at long muscle lengths exclusively for all your training, what seems to be relatively clear with some terms and conditions is that the stretch position, the lengthened position of a muscle, putting your muscle in that lengthened position is beneficial for hypertrophy. And you should ensure that whatever range of motion you're using, you are emphasizing, you're placing some emphasis in the, on the lengthened position of a, of a muscle. Excellent. All right, so you said range of motion, the last one was kinematics. Exercise specific kinematics and tempo. Tempo, what did you guys find on tempo? So I was coming in from, when I started doing the review, um, I came in from a place where I was like, okay, slow eccentric, fast concentric. When looking at the direct literature, things are not super clear. And it does seem that as long as you control your eccentric and you don't let the weight free fall, a wide range of uh, tempos can be employed as long as you're within two to eight seconds for the entirety of your repetition. So both concentric and concentric tempo combined. Now, there are studies that show that a slightly slower eccentric leads to marginally more growth for some muscles than a faster eccentric, but then vice versa, there's, there are a couple of studies that show the opposite, you know, slower concentric leading to more growth. So overall, although more evidence and more research is needed, we're not 100% sure, it does seem that as long as you are, you know, keeping things relatively controlled, you could go a bit faster on the eccentric, a bit slower on the concentric based on your preference. Although as we will speak uh, in a bit, based on the range of motion recommendations, there are cases where a slower eccentric, in my opinion at least, and this is also, you know, coach pack, just aside from researcher pack, in practice may make more sense so that you can get that nice stretch. Okay. 
And then exercise specific kinematics. What did you guys find generally? Tough general topic to research. Super. And surprisingly, or non surprisingly, when it comes to like exercise specific modifications, like, oh, slightly point your um, thumbs up on this exercise or whatever, point your feet more outwards when you're doing a squat or whatever, there isn't much, if anything, on how on whether those things actually make a meaningful difference for hypertrophy. There is one study on the calves where they looked at pointing your feet inwards, outwards, and so on and so forth. And they did see differences in hypertrophy mm -hmm. based on, on, on that. But for other muscles and other exercises, there simply isn't much. Same to an extent with, uh, with injury where things are not very clear in the sense, you know, we, we did some flexion rows yesterday. Some old school bros will tell you, yeah, bro, don't round your upper back. It's bad because you'll you. die. Because you'll die. And as it's, it, there's not much direct evidence to confidently say that this particular alteration in technique, as long as it feels comfortable, it's pain free, and you're not doing anything crazy, that it will lead to, uh, to injury. And overall, another thing that we're missing is evidence on strict technique specifically and what strict really means versus loose versus technique. loose lenient technique there's one modeling paper on the use of external momentum mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i mean you cannot place much stock on a modeling paper and as it stands i would argue that the use of external momentum and loose technique i do not see any pros um any big pros on why you do that aside from enjoyment but that's a bit you know on the reduction side of things. The enjoyment is like, yeah, you, you like things, that's nice, but we're talking about effect. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So, so far, let me try to summarize the what science definitely has to say about technique. And then I'd love to hear two things. One, did I get it right? Mm -hmm. And two, what does Coach Pack think about any extra layering or extra caveating, extra advice for people looking mm -hmm. at their technique? So part one is... When you're doing most exercises in most contexts, the deep stretch under lots of tension, don't miss that. Much else beyond that, we're not really prepared to say. True? Yes. The next one is, uh, dude, I'm blanking out every, every single time with the middle one. Tempo. Tempo. Um, any differences that exist between concentric and eccentric speeds uh, are not going to directly impact short-term muscle gains measured in the course of weeks. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, exercise-specific kinematics are pretty straightforward, and there's not any compelling data that as long as an exercise isn't causing you grotesque pain, that some exercises are kind of categorically off-limits and some kind of techniques are categorically off-limits than others. Yes. So that means there's a lot of open room for prancing around the meadows mm -hmm. for coaching because science hasn't infected this world of ours yet with its certainties. What does Coach Pack say about what to you in the gym, if someone is doing, looks right on versus someone's doing, you're like, look, man, you should think about your technique being better. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's context dependent. If I see the average Joe who just wants to build muscle and strength, and they're taking those few basic boxes and they're not skipping on long muscle lengths. They're not necessarily emphasizing them and doing their best to get a deeper stretch, but they're not cutting ROM short. Full range of motion, chest press machine, down, up, controlling the eccentric, not necessarily spending four seconds or whatever. Just like the most vanilla basic set you could ever imagine. If I see that and you're somebody who's trying to get jacked and strong, but you're not absolutely trying to maximize gains, even if that's uneducated, but totally fine. Now, in the context of a lot of people that, you know, watch this channel and consume our information who want to make every educated bet, um, if you are skipping the, if you're, if, you, if you're avoiding training at long muscle lengths or at least not emphasizing them, sure, do I think that you're missing out on a ton of gains? Probably not, but it's good gym etiquette. You're not the time requirement to do so is an extra second. And I do not see a reason why not to do it unless there's an extreme level of discomfort where then you can potentially opt for other exercises. For the eccentric uh, and uh, concentric duration of a repetition, as coach pack, I'd say that 
Super slow eccentrics are not necessary, but in the context of maximizing muscle growth, if you are trying to get a nice stretch, there are exercises where you'll have to slow things down to emphasize that length and position. So I do think there is some merit to not just going, okay, as long as I control the eccentric and I'm within two to eight seconds based on the literature that has limitations, I'm good. Therefore, I will do that and I will try and make a point by not slowing down the eccentric further because yeah, I don't want to do what people tell me. Mm -hmm. I do think there's merit to doing so in some exercises, depending on the exercise setup and so on, like a lat pull down or the rows we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, overall, though, it as coach back, gym etiquette, appropriate technique etiquette, is something that I try to convey to most people, regardless of what your goals are. Again, I don't see much of a reason to be sloppy with things. Unless, again, you're the guy who says, yeah, bro, my life is 13 times better when I don't care and I just do whatever. But overall, keeping things relatively strict. Yes, if we were to have an academic debate about it, I can not show you a bunch of studies and be like, this is definitely better theoretically. But I, in practice, I don't see a reason why not, uh, why you shouldn't keep things strict without losing your mind about slight deviations from what strict is when effort uh, comes into question. When things get hard, it doesn't matter if you slightly rounded your back during that last rep or you slightly arched less because you're at the final rep and you're like pushing with everything you got. That's another thing that people, uh, that I think based of, of this review, people can take a step back and be like, okay, it's not the end of the world if it didn't look exactly the same. Uh, if my, my reps at the end of a set didn't look exactly the same as the first reps, again, as long as you're taking Tempo and range of motion recommendations. I love it. This is one of these situations in which there's so little formal evidence that on the balance of science has confirmed this and there's no need for bros to weigh in or coaches to weigh in mm -hmm. versus it's mostly bros and coaching and science doesn't say a lot. It's much more that second one. But at the very least, it tells us something informative about people who would claim that you must get exercises ultra specific in very specific movement patterns or else. Or else, yeah. Can claim that from a coaching perspective, but cannot yet claim it from an empirical perspective. People who would say that you have to do slow eccentrics for direct muscular benefit versus something like variation, which is mm -hmm. something we talk about on the channel, Versus something like injury prevention, which, you know, like faster eccentrics is greater risk of injury. Now, I'm not saying it's a huge risk, but it has to be higher risk because velocity increases risk of injury very predictably. And so if someone's like, no, this eccentric speed is superior because science, not yet, fellas, may, not yet. And on the, luckily, we have a little bit more data on the range of motion side. Then it's like, look, if you, the way I see it is this. If you're missing out on the deep stretch, you better tell me a convincing story as to mm -hmm. why you're doing it. Because if you're not getting that deep stretch, you're clearly losing out on potential gains. Yeah? Yeah, and, and it's a case of even if, let's say, the world turns upside down and every, the, every piece of evidence we have now gets overturned by another 20 studies, right? Worst case scenario, you made the same gains and you made an educated bet based on the current evidence, which makes sense especially in the context of, I want to get the most gains possible, bro, it's an extra half a second of doing this. Yes. Like, just do it. Yes, I love it. Pac, that was really instructive. If I want to see more of your beautiful face, is there a place on YouTube where I can maybe subscribe to your channel to see it over and over? On YouTube and other platforms. But on YouTube, if you just YouTube Dr. Pack, there's a channel with myself, Dr. Pack, real doctor, no gimmicks, as I like to claim. What do you think the executives at Big Pharma are doing right now? They're trying to get the infamous, whom should we call a real doctor paper? Actual paper. Actual, really? Yes, actual paper. They're trying to get, re get it retracted. And the conclusion of that paper is, it's like a letter to the editor sort of paper. Jesus. When physicians or dentists ask us, who should we call, who are the real doctors? We say, we because we are the ones who teach. That's the actual conclusion. Yeah. Something along those lines. And so they're just physicians and dentists. We're doctors. I mean, if we're being pedantic, 
And as doctors, we have to be pedantic. God bless the PhDs. I love it. Pac, thanks for coming on the channel. Another see you next time. Folks, give him a subscribe, a follow, a love, a like. And uh, he does have another platform in which he posts much more intimate things. Give that a Google. We can't say it out loud. See you next time. Thank you.